Hi, welcome to Small Museums Unit 5. Topic for this unit, exhibitions and programs, which I have to admit is my favorite. I love talking about exhibitions and programs. Now we all know by this time that small museums don't have time or money. But really, why does your museum exist? It's got a mission statement. It's probably something like to preserve and to educate which means exhibitions. Why create exhibitions? To display the objects the museum owns, to get people to come to the museum, to carry out the museum's mission to preserve and educate. But if you've already got exhibitions up, why create new ones? Ha, ah, because people have already seen your work. Likewise, why develop programs? To explain the objects the museum owns, to get people to come to the museum, to carry out the museum's mission to preserve and educate. And if you've already got programs and they're working, why create new ones? Because people have been to your old ones. Now, if you've got a regular program that works well, if you've got your annual holiday house decoration program or your annual crafts fair or your annual grunion run keep those by all means but you gotta have new stuff so first off whether you're doing exhibit or program who is your audience locals tourists schools special interest groups like car clubs quilt clubs your friends and family who would you like to be your audience? And we'll keep those people in. If you're doing an exhibit, you also have to think, how long will it be open? Permanent, no museum exhibit is ever actually permanent, but we call them permanent when they're going to be up for many years. And in that case, it's worth putting time and money into it. it you're gonna get more out of it the one on the left here, they've got a mural and they put a lot into making that look really good. If it's temporary and it's only going to be up for a season or two, you don't want to put as much into it. Who will create the exhibit or the program? Exhibitions require a little more. Project manager, curator, educator, designer, installation manager, marketing person, and museum store buyer to get people to buy stuff from the exhibit they've seen. Program takes a little less a curator or an outside topic expert. You could bring someone in, uh, educator, marketing, publicity, and maybe even museum store buyer. And because we're talking small museums, I realize that all of these people may be you. That's okay. But it's helpful to remember to put these different hats on. Okay, what would the curator think about this? Mm, but would the educator like it? How would we market this? These are all things that you got to think about as you're planning. And if it's just you, then you got to plan it with just you. When will you create the exhibition or program? Start with the opening day or the event date and work backwards. You want it to open by a certain date. You've got to install it or set it up, get all the supplies, get the chairs lined up. you got to write it. you got to research and plan it. Ah, and we have to come up with the idea. What will the exhibit or program be about you thought this would be first didn't you this comes this far last in our program because we really needed to know all this information about who's the audience and what do we have and how much are we going to put into it before we can start thinking about what topics interest your audience what artifacts do you have or what content specialists can you contact to get in and come and talk to your members? Sometimes it's really helpful to get someone from out of the area and your area humanities council or other organizations can help you with an outside expert. Is there a special anniversary or event coming up? Is it 
the 100th anniversary of the founding of your hospital? Um, is it uh, 20 years ago that a new species was discovered in your swamp? Um, have you got a, a new boat ramp being installed? You know, there are all sorts of ways you can bring anniversaries or current events into your museum and make connections with your community. And keep in mind what can people do, not just hear or see. Of course, an ex excuse me, in exhibitions you want to have some hands-on things. And in programs, lectures are fine, but make and take programs are very popular. It's nice to have someone talk about basket making, but if people can then take a few minutes and play with some of the materials and take home a little coaster or something that they made. They love that. So you end up with a worksheet, whether you're planning an exhibit or a program, all of the things we've talked about. Uh, you want to be able to state the topic in one sentence because if you can't put it in one sentence, it's too big and you need to make the topic smaller. Um, reason you think it will be popular organizations you can collaborate uh, once again what are other local clubs photography club or something that would love to get involved with your museum either offering a program or helping with an exhibit and if you are talking about planning an exhibit you're still talking programs because you want to have programs that go with it the program and the exhibits need to all connect and be part of your museum whole. So why do we have to do all of this for an exhibition? Can't we just put stuff out to show it? No! Look at these exhibits. I mean, really, the one on the right, it's buttons. Who cares? You want to show off your artifacts as if they are precious and tell people the stories of your artifacts. You'll probably put less of them out, but people will learn more and appreciate things more. And you will be surprised at what you can find and use for very low cost. PVC pipe made into mannequins, only temporary of course because these are not archival, but for a short term either a short exhibit of a few weeks or months, or even while you're giving a talk about clothing or other items, you can take the PVC apart and put it back together into any size and shape. You can get book stands, photo stands, and risers from a craft supply store. I've even found them at the dollar store. And this lovely display case on the right even has a light built into the top, and it's from Ikea. We're talking program. Why do we have to go through all this? Can't we just get someone to talk? You don't know if the person's going to be a good speaker. And you don't want to have a speaker come to an empty house, which I have had happen. So no, you can't just throw it together. Your visitors and members deserve quality programs, and your presenters deserve an audience. The picture on the left is from one of the most successful programs I was ever involved in. It's a living history baseball team playing baseball in the 1860s rules. They are still going strong 12 years later. One of the players on the team said, I never would have gotten involved in a historical society before, but here he is, a member and contributing. You want to have interesting programs in, in your galleries. Uh, let people come and sit down and get comfortable. Um, do vibrant and exciting things. Bring them into the one-room schoolhouse. Do things that, that will excite people. If it excites you, it might excite them. Don't forget, you are, of course, required to follow ADA regulations, no matter how small your museum. And the good old ADA does actually have a web page dedicated to museums and what we are required to do. Resources. There are so many resources about exhibits and programs. You can just Google this and find all sorts of stuff. I want to point out a couple. One that many people don't think about is your local community theater. 
you know what they have there? They have fake walls with fake windows in them and fireplaces and they have risers to make things stand up higher and they have all sorts of flats and resources and furniture and props and they have people who know how to talk to an audience and hold their interest. You want to become friends with your local community theater and they may even let you borrow stuff for free if you put an ad in your newsletter for their next play. Your local, excuse me, your National Park Service is once again a fabulous resource. Nobody trains more people how to write and give programs than the National Park Service every summer when they hire thousands of temporary park rangers. They know what they're doing. They have websites all about how to develop programs and of course they have exhibition guidelines for all of their remote little itty bitty national park museums. For your course spanning project this unit go to the museum you're studying as a visitor and first I want you to experience the exhibits through a visitor's eyes what you think a typical visitor might see and then analyze them from a museum studies program. And same with the public programs. Um, think about what would the public see if they look at this list of events? Is this something they would want to go to? Do you think it fits with the mission? Um, and then stand back as a museum studies student and uh, what does your education tell you about these programs? Attend one if you can. If not, you can't, but try to see if you can attend one. As always, please feel free to contact me. I am here to help you. Ask questions as often as you need to because that's my job. I hope you have a good time with this unit and I'll see you next time.